This is a very disgusting story. So an elderly man went to visit his younger friend who was sick. And what he did in this visitation is something out of a horror movie. This is why we have to be careful who we pick as friends because let me tell you, some people are the devil himself. So this incident happened in Ocean State, Okeodo area of Oshobo, where a 35-year-old man by the name of Emmanuel Collins was said to have been seriously sick. Now, Emmanuel Collins is of Ghanaian descent, but he lived in Oshobo. It's unclear if he lived with his family or given the situation, I want to assume he lived alone. And Emmanuel was friends with a 50-year-old man named Ken De Ganyu, who is a traditional herbalist and also a farmer. It's unclear their friendship, it's unclear how they knew each other, but given the age gap, I want to say maybe Ken De was more like a fatherly role to 35-year-old Emmanuel. But the story goes that they were close, which meant they knew of each other's business, which I would guess would have made Emmanuel maybe foresee what was about to happen to him. Or maybe not, because you see, people are full of surprises. Even your dog that you've known for years could turn out one day to bite you up and eat you up and kill you. And I guess this was the case for Emmanuel Collins. Because while he was sick, on the 9th of July 2024, his elderly friend, his father figure, Ken De Ganiyu, paid a visit to him. And in that visitation, what this man did is something that I, I don't even know where to begin. So, Ganiyu was there with Emmanuel, seeing him dealing with his sickness, maybe taking medication, receiving drip, they maybe had a conversation. It is possible that Ganeyu thought Emmanuel was not going to make it out of the sickness. It is possible that Ganeyu thought, okay, maybe the sickness was going to kill him. And rather than the sickness to kill him and let him waste like that, and the Ganeyu had a bigger and a much better plan. When Ganeyu realized that the coast was clear and that there was nobody else in sight, just him and his 35-year-old friend who was sick, he brought out a knife and used it on his friend. Ganeyu arrested some parts of Emmanuel's truth and other vital parts of his body and left him there for other people to discover him. So what did he do with these body parts? It turned out that Kende Ganeyu was somebody who was into soap making. Apparently, he's one of those herbalist or should i say native doctor who makes soap for yahoo boys we've done multiple stories of yahoo boys going to meet babalawos and herbalists and you know traditional healers to make soap for them to use to be successful and it is believed that ken de Ghani was one of such herbalists who made soap the only thing is one of his major secret ingredients of making the soap used by yahoo boys to be successful was body parts human body parts after collecting the truth of emmanuel he went on to dry it for three days after three days he took the dried remains to the bush in a village where he burnt it with other ritual materials before mixing it with other ingredients to make soap all the while emmanuel's body was discovered and it was clear that he had been killed People would have believed or assumed that he died from his sickness. But given what they saw, they knew that somebody had come to use a weapon on him. And nobody had any suspect at the time. Nobody was suspicious of anything. All the while, Ken Day was making the soap for his future clients who would want to be successful. It's also possible that maybe a Yahoo boy, somebody had met him for that specific cream. Because from what we'll see, these herbalists usually make this on request and sometimes they make it to keep just to sell emmanuel's death was terrible and tragic and his loved ones who were there if possible because i hear he's of Ghanaian descent so it's not clear if his body was sent back home or if he had a family around who lived in that area but it was during his burial that everything would come to light. How his friend King Day was caught is somewhat a mystery. One of those things where people believe that the ghost of the victim will torture and torment the perpetrators till they make a confession. And that was what was said happened. During his burial, King Day attended and while he was at the burial day on the burial site, he started acting up. He started misbehaving. He started becoming uneasy. He became uncomfortable. It's almost as if he was filled with guilt shame and it's almost as if he felt that people knew and suspected him and because of his unusual behavior he was questioned and it's also possible that people suspected him because i don't know how he would go and visit somebody and nobody would see him i'm sure people cared for emmanuel for a funeral to be held for him it meant that he had loved ones who were around so i would assume the day came they went to visit emmanuel somebody may have seen something and maybe Kendi may have been suspected 
even minus that they were both friends and people knew what came this business was they knew he was, was a herbalist but they did not know how far he took it and no one would imagine that if at all he was going to use a human being for soap it wouldn't be his close friend somebody who is young enough to be his own son there's a possibility that Kane Day became filled with guilt that he confessed however people did not take him seriously but the police was called it was when the police came that they were able to take his confession seriously and then they took him to his own house where a search was made and they discovered uh, clay pots with soap believed to have been made out of human uh, remains they saw four blood-stained knives with weapons that appeared to have been used for ritual purposes a lot of fetish items were also recovered from his house which made it more believable that there is a chance and that there is a truth in his confession that he killed his friend Emmanuel. It's so unfortunate that Emmanuel had to die in the hands of his friends but this is one of many stories where we see friends turn on friends and pretty much use friends for greedy purposes. This reminds me of a story that we we're supposed to do a few months back of a man who was arrested in Ondo state for luring and killing his friend just because he wanted to steal his bike and sell it for 20,000 naira. Now, this particular story happened in March of 2024, where a 35-year-old man by the name of Dolapo Babalola lured his friend, a 34-year-old man named Opeyemi. Dolapo told Opeyemi that, you know, they should go and inspect the farmland in, uh, in a particular village. And Opeyemi pretty much believed that this was a legit farm inspection. Little did he know that the friend he was trusting had ulterior motive. He was even there with one other person. And so they all went to the farmland. He parked his bike thinking that he was going to see a farmland that his friend was maybe having interest in or his friend wanted his opinion on. And when he got there, he had a scuffle over the bike. That was when Okpeyemi realized that Dolapo wanted to steal his bike. And since they were friends, he could not even understand it. This must have been a shock to him. And when they were going back and forth with the what was going on here, that was when Dolapo's friend. His accomplice came out with a stone and hit uh, Opeyemi in the head and they pretty much just blanched this man to death, threw his body in a pit and covered it with grass and took his bike. I've always said this that the enemies are usually closer than we think and we have to be careful out there. We have to be really careful. A lot of the crimes and murder cases that we talk about, many of them are usually committed by people who are familiar with the victims and it's scary and very unfortunate and two of this story are very similar because when they were both caught and they claimed it was the devil that pushed him to do it the same way Dolakbo claimed it was the devil that pushed him to do it it's always going to be blamed on the devil but that is usually when they are caught at least for Kane this case he confessed Dolapo had to be you know investigated and arrested before he made his confession and blamed it on the devil it's all for greed it's all greediness you kill your friend to take his bike to sell it for what 120,000 naira and you killed your friend to cut off his throat to make soap to sell to a yahoo boy for what it's just unfortunate and it's really very sad very sad that human beings are capable of some of the most heinous crimes you can ever imagine and this is why we have to be careful of the people we call our friends so thank you guys for watching don't forget to like share subscribe and turn on notification button so whenever there's a new video you'll be the first to get notified thank you